All right, reading of the word. We're going to start at uh, Matthew 16, verse 26. You guys ready? Matthew 16, verse 26. It says, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Hmm? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Okay, Mark chapter 14, uh, starting at verse 26. Three, while he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very expensive, if I say expensive, expensive, perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar, poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste, everybody say waste, waste. of perfume. It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you. And you can help them anytime you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. We're going to jump to John 15. John chapter 15. Do, do we have that? No? Okay, I'll read it for you. Starting at verse 9, as the Father has loved me, say me, so have I loved you, say you. Now remain in my love, say remain. If you keep my commands, you will remain, say remain, in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remained in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that you are with us. You are our Father who is with us. You are our Father who's constantly speaking to us, directing us, leading us. Guys, the word of the Lord is life to us. It's the source of life, Lord. So, Father, we ask that you would, in this season of our lives, open our ears, empower us to pursue your voice, to anchor in your word, and to be directed by your voice, none other. Holy Spirit, empower us to remain in your love, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So I'm going to need some help today. So I'm going to need David and Timmy. Where's Timmy? Timmy, where are you? Come on. Come, come on. David, come on. So... Who do you think, if Timmy and David come up here, if they competed on a soccer game, who do you think will win? David on my right, Timmy on my left. Come on, come stand. All right? Oh, everybody said David. Oh, you guys. <laughs> All right. I mean, okay, let's see. Let's see how good Timmy is. Timmy, let's see if you could score. Okay, let's move out of the way. Let's see if you can do it. Come on, show us. Yeah. Oh, 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 come on, score, score, score. Oh. oh. <laughs> that was good to me. <laughs> but he messed it up. He was, he was supposed to miss it. What kind of help? Chris, I need you, man. <laughs> Okay, he was supposed to do that. Miss, right? Okay, uh, somebody get that ball for me. Oftentimes, right, what's the goal of the soccer? Score. Who wins? Whoever scores, right? Even if you can't do liftings like Timmy, come on, David, show us. Show us. Can you score? Okay, I, okay, you can't lift. Okay, that's fine. But can you score? 
<laughs> Thanks a lot to me. <laughs> okay, you know what? That did it. Okay, you guys go sit. Okay, I need Ade. Ade, come help me. Okay, I want to see, I want you guys to look at what Ade is about to do. And I want you to think about, is that the way I'm living my life, right? Okay, go ahead, Ade. Okay. What are you doing, Ade? Okay. Mm. What? One bite? That's it? What are you doing? You're waste, you just wasted a whole bar of chocolate. Okay, m and oh, oh, what? There's like 30 more pieces over there. What are you doing? He's wasting food. He's wasting food, guys. Oh, did he even eat the whole thing? What are you doing, Anna? You're wasting precious food. Oh, what? Anna, you have to eat the whole thing. I paid money for all this. I worked hard to buy these. Thank you. My question is this. Ade is wasting food. But sometimes we are living our lives wasting our time, our efforts, our lives on something like this. So today, I want to continue on what I preached a few weeks ago. You guys remember what I preached on? <laughs> continue to waste. Do you guys remember when I preached on anchoring in the Word of God? This anchor is the written word of God and how you have to position yourself every morning, every day, right? And then you got to ask God, God, what are you saying to me? And you got to make sure the rope, the spoken word of God is connected to the anchor so that you're not like a boat that is, right, tossed to and fro. Are you going to drink the whole thing? Only if you're going to drink the whole thing, brother. He's not going to drink the whole thing. He's going to waste a bottle, right? He's going to drink. That's it. What a waste. <laughs> give, give a clap for Ade. <laughs> Today, like I said before, I want to talk about making sure we don't live like Ade did. Wasting stuff, wasting our energy, wasting our efforts, wasting our lives away. Okay? but making sure that what we do counts at the end, okay? Part two of what I preached on the anchoring in the Word of God. It's about hearing God's voice. It's about allowing God's voice to center us, strengthen us, and guide us. Amen? So my question to you is this. Will your life count at the end? Will your efforts that you're putting in this week, last week, will your work, your life, will it count at the end or will it all go to the wastebasket? Hmm? Will it last or are you wasting your efforts, wasting your time, wasting your life? You know, many things, if I say many things, appear important and necessary. Yet, everybody say yet. Often they're not. We frequently expend our time and energy on less significant things that won't count at the end. For instance, you may toil day and night in advertently sacrificing your precious time with your family and lose relationships that are most important to you. In Luke chapter 12, there's a man. There's a man that worked hard, guys. But at the end, he wasted all his efforts. I'm going to read you from Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 16. It says, this is Jesus who told this parable. The ground of a certain rich man, I would say rich man, yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. 
Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Everybody say bigger ones. And there I will store all my surplus, surplus gain, grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God, everybody say, but God, God. said to him, you fool. Okay, don't look at anybody but say, you fool. <laughs> this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? See, this man, he yielded much harvest, abundant harvest. I'm pretty sure he worked hard all year, many years, toiling, saving, not wasting like Ade did. You know, if, if, if anybody threw, he probably took it out, right? He probably didn't waste one grain, and he filled his barn up, and then he worked harder, and he got more crops. And then he's like, oh, man, I don't have enough room. What am I going to do? I know what I'll do. I'll buy a bigger house. I know what I'll do. I'll buy a better car. You know, I would have been happy with Honda Civic 20 years ago. Right? I was happy with Honda Accord 10 years ago. And I've been telling my husband, can you buy me that car that opens up like this? I know what I'll do. I'll build a bigger barn. And then I'll tell myself, good job, good job. Enjoy life. And then what happens? He dies. All wasted. All that hard work. Who's going to eat it? Who's going to enjoy it? Who's going to live in that big house? Who's going to drive that nice car? Hmm? It didn't count. His effort, his labor, his harvest did not count at the end. What a waste. Look at your neighbor and say, what a waste. This man saved. He worked hard. But his effort at the end didn't count. It was wasted. On the other hand, we read earlier in Mark, Jesus talks about a woman who did the opposite. And people rebuked her for wasting a valuable thing. But you know what Jesus did? He praised her. When people said, oh, people, they said people rebuked her harshly. What are you doing? That's like one person's whole year's wages. You could have sold it and, and, and helped the poor. What are you doing? People rebuked her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. What she did, it matters. And it's going to be remembered, Jesus said, beyond her life on earth. God rebukes a man that worked hard and saved, but praised a woman who wasted a whole jar of perfume. In this, what? I don't know how much people make. What, $100,000 a year? She wasted $100,000 of worth of perfume in one sitting. And Jesus praised her. Waste. Are you living for a waste? Are you wasteful? I looked at the definition of waste. It says, garbage. Oh, yeah. What is garbage? Something unusable, say unusable, squandered, defective, worthless. So how do you discern? Look at your neighbor and ask, how do you discern? What will actually count? How do you discern that you are living towards something that is not a waste? How do you know that you're not squandering what is precious? How do you know? that you're walking towards something that is actually unusable at the end. I recently watched a Korean drama. Who watches Korean drama? Woohoo, Ruby! This is my Korean sister. One day I'm going to take her to Korea. 
The title of this drama is called Bad Good Mother. And in this drama, it starts with this, this uh, evil man killing her husband, a very faithful, very loving man. At that time, she was pregnant. So when she had her son, she raised him to be successful because they were so poor that nobody took their side, right? And then the evil man that killed her husband became more rich, right? And she had no justice. So she worked hard. She didn't, she didn't make, she made sure her son didn't get full. So she would only give her limited food, give him limited food saying, if you get full, you're not going to be able to focus, which means you're not going to be able to study well. And she would take away food. When, when uh, his classmate went on a picnic, she said, you cannot go. She was mean. She was so mean. At the end, guess what? He went to college, and at the end, guess what? He became a prosecutor, and that's exactly what she wanted to do. And in the first, like, part of the drama, she makes lots of food on, her birthday, on his birthday. She goes to Seoul to, to, to drop it off. But she's, he's in his apartment, and she, he's not answering. And so she goes to the, the, in Korea, if you are rich, right? Oh, in America too, I guess. Um, like you go to the front and there's a guard, right? And you can't really go right in. And she asks the guard, like, is my son here? And, uh, and he's like, let me check. He calls. He answers and says, just tell, your mom's here with food. And then he says, just tell her, tell her I'm not home. Clicks. And then he's like, uh. And then the mother's like, Oh, he's not home, right? Here, can you make sure he gets this? All that work to get him successful, but he won't, he's not even willing to have one meal with his mother. The sacrifice, the hard work of that mother, was it worth it? Was it worth it? Was it worth it? I would cry if I was that mother. I was like, you better. No, okay. <laughs> what a waste. But you got to, I mean, there's twists and turns. And at the end, the last scene, she dies. And before she dies, she wrote a letter to her son and said, Son, I hope I get to be your mother in my next life. And if I ever become your mother, I will feed you to your content. I will not tell you that studying is the, is the most important thing. I will make sure that you feel my love. And then he's crying. There's more to this story. But I thought, man, she did all that for what? So that her son could hate her and not want to be with her? So how do you make your life count? How do you make sure your effort will count at the end and you reap the benefit of your efforts? The answer is in John. Jesus said, remain in me. Remain in my love. Hearing God's words, keeping his words, that's the only way for you to work, make sure your efforts and your life counts at the end. We saw, right, the soccer, you know, just because you could, you practice a lot and you kick a lot outside of the pitch. I don't care how hard you work outside of the pitch. It won't count. What counts is what you do inside of the pitch, right? Inside of the pitch. And then what counts is when you score. But so many of us, we live our lives outside of God's will, outside of God's voice, outside of God's love. And we toil, we run, we, we work day and night. But at the end, it doesn't count because you were not on the pitch. You got to remain on the pitch. You got to remain in God. When you remain in him, he says, you will bear much fruit. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. 
If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's command and remained in his love. You know, keeping his command is hearing his voice and doing what he says. But if you don't know how to hear his voice, you're going to be confused. Am I on the pitch or am I not? Hmm? The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. And you and I, we must seek his voice daily. Everybody say daily. daily. I mean, we talked about the anchor last time, right? You, every day, every day you got to anchor yourself in the written word of God. What is the word of God if you're not familiar, like Benjamin right now, you know, he's so dizzy. He can't even read. He can't watch anything. He got to rest his brain. But good thing that that man memorized the scriptures, right? So he's able to anchor in the written word of God and pursue the, the spoken word of God, what God, God is saying to him. Every day, we got, we, without this, you are off the pitch. But when you grab the word of God, the Bible, and then ask God, what does this, what I read, have anything to do with my life? And as you ask God, what are you saying to me in my life? What are you saying to me today? What matters to you, God? When you seek his voice in the word of God, then you are able to remain on the pitch. Hmm? Now, Daddy, I want you to come help me. I was going to have Benjamin come help me. I told you the rope to the anchor is the, 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 the personal word that you hear God, what God is saying to you, right? You got to hear him, right? Here, you could hold that. My daddy here represent God, our father. When I pursue, what is God saying to me? I am connected to him. And this connection, okay, you could kind of really say wherever I go, it helps me remain on the pitch. But when I let go, pursuing the word of God, I toil off the pitch. And whatever I do unconnected to God won't count at the end. It will all be a waste. Discipleship is remaining connected to the voice of God, to the word of God. Come on, Rebecca, come help me. My job is to remain connected to the voice of the Father. And my, dis you could go down there. And she's my disciple. She's my intern. You know how I'm going to disciple her? Stay, stay like that. Walk around. Yeah, yeah. This is discipleship. Yeah. If I'm not connected, okay, if I'm not connected listening to the voice of God, she's wasting her time. Yeah. Because I may say something good sometimes, but I'm going to be wrong most of the time. <laughs> but when I'm connected, right, and then uh, Angie, come help. G give her the, the, yeah, and then you stay in the middle. Be connected. This is discipleship. The word of God, right? And now Rebecca is discipled by me, but you know what? She could also turn around, disciple Angie, as long as she's connected to the word of God. Okay, come on, come on the pitch, guys. Come, uh, come on the platform. Hold, hold on to it. This is discipleship. At the end, Angie, get the soccer ball. Okay. Hold the, hold the rope. When you are connected in community, in the word, in the spoken word of God, Angie, she has no idea. She may not have any idea what she's doing. But at the end, as she's connected, she's right there at the right place, at the right time. Kick. What she did right there will count at the end of her life, right? Now, 
Look at this, guys. This is discipleship, right? And let's say I die because I'm 100 years old and I lived a good life. I die. But Rebecca is still connected to God's voice. You hear me? This is a life. This is what church is. This is what we need to pursue as a community, seeking the voice of the Father and allowing the words of the Father to direct our lives, our ministry, and our efforts. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Here, you may be seated. The Word of God will keep you on the pitch, okay? You guys all heard what happened to Benjamin last week. He was hospitalized. He collapsed. I had to call 911, you know, and then he had an allergic reaction to the wrong new medicine, and it was pretty scary. But then, you know, God, like, had mercy on him. He came home. And during that time, I, we, we both knew what God was saying to us. And so even though it was scary, we were, like, strong. It's like we heard the voice. God's hand was all over us. So we're like, it's pretty scary, but we're good, guys. People are like, Pastor Sonia, are you okay? I'm good. I know what God is saying. My husband, he's, he's going to live. Nothing's going to happen to him. This is just God trying to teach us, trying to direct us. It's going to be okay. And then the second week comes around, and now he's home, right? And I'm like driving a lake yeah, everywhere. Her cousin came, so I want to make sure they're having fun. So I'm driving here, picking this up, and I'm driving them to the swimming pool. I don't want to go to the movies. So I'm driving them to the movies. They want to go to the mall. I'm driving to the mall, and Benjamin's like, I need this food, and I'm taking this food, and, and I'm like, ah, right? Oh. I got kind of busy, and I got kind of like tired. And then in the middle of the week, I got discouraged. I kind of got depressed a little bit. I'm like, oh, I'm just, I, don't, I don't care. I don't know. I have no faith. I don't, I don't care anymore. I became very apathetic for a day. And I was like, oh. and by Friday, I'm like, I'm not taking you guys anywhere. <laughs> Benjamin, just eat the soup that mom made you. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> and then I'm like, God, what is wrong with me? I'm not liking anybody around me. I'm not even liking myself right now. What is going on? And then I realize, oh, shoot. In the busyness of my life, I didn't stop to position myself, to anchor myself in the word of God. I mean, I talked to him. And even when I did my quiet time, I'm like, okay, hurry up and read, write it, and then move on. You know what I didn't do? God, I'm with you. God, what are you saying? God, I'm really tired. Give me your strength in your word. I didn't stop. I was just, I came off the pitch and I was just toiling. Okay, I'm going to be a good mother. Okay, I'm going to be a good wife. Okay, I'm going to try to be a good pastor at this time. Okay, I'm toiling, and by them, like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> Leave me alone. But it is when on Friday I realized, oh, my gosh, I need to anchor myself in the word of God, not just quickly go through the routine and I get my QT. God, help me. I cried out just like Chin Wei did. God, help me. God, help me. How do I get back on the pitch? God, what are you saying to me? And you know what God said? That just John, Sonny, remain in my love. Everything's going to be okay. Remain in my love. Remain in my word. And when I stopped, when I felt like, you know what? It's going to be okay. God's hand is upon my husband. Aletia will still have a great summer even if I don't drive her around every day. 
I'm going to show you this. I'm going to probably end with this. This represents, this battle represents your life. Okay? The water represents your efforts, your success, your work, what you do, what you, what you are pursuing, what you are doing every day, your life. What's going to count is at the end what remains in the bottle. Are you living a life like this? Wow, you're so successful. Wow, you're making so much money. Wow, you're so smart. Wow, look at you. Wow, success. Success. Wow, you're amazing. But at the end, would you have anything in your life that's going to actually count? But when you are connected and anchored in the word of God, in the voice of God, your efforts, your life, your pursuit, everything will count at the end. This life is what God wants you to have at the end of your life. But don't you feel like this sometimes? I was meeting with one of our members, and we were talking about how empty we feel, how discouraged we were, how disappointed in life we were. I didn't expect my life to turn like this. This is what this member said. I thought I would be a lot more successful. I thought I would have much more in my life. I worked so hard. I worked so hard. But now when I look at my life, it's empty. Where did, all, where did it all go? And I remember talking to this member. You know, success is good. Being rich is good. Being famous is good. All that, it's good. But what actually counts at the end is what God says. And doing what God says, valuing what God values, not living like that rich man who toiled and died and didn't get to, to enjoy what he worked for, but to be like that woman with alabaster jar. Whatever for God, I pour it out. And at the end, you know what God says? What you did to me was beautiful. Your life is beautiful. It's significant to me. It's precious to me. Why? Because you remained with me. At the end of the life, mothers have holding their sons and daughters, not dying alone in an empty room. At the end of our life, we could look back and say, I walked with God. When I was success, I was with God. When I was in the pit, the, the bottom of the pit, in the darkest season of my life, I was okay because I was with God. I knew how to remain in God's love because I had his word. The word of God, the voice of God is what matters. Everything will pass away, the Bible says. Everything will pass away, but only the Word of God will remain. I know all of you, you're working hard. As mothers and fathers, you work so hard for your children. Singles, I know you're trying. You're working so hard. But let's not run after things that won't count at the end. What counts at the end is, are you with God? Are you able 
to hear his voice in the, in the season of darkness? Are you able to anchor your soul in the voice of God and say, all is well? Words of God, the voice of God, remain in my love, remain in me, stay on the pitch. You cannot remain on the pitch in your own strength, toiling day after day. Only thing that's going to make sure that your life counts at the end is when you are connected, when you pursue the voice of God. So we all arise with me. Let me pray this prayer over you. Father, I pray for every member, every attender, every son and daughter of yours that are standing here in this sanctuary. God, we, all of us, God, we work so hard. But Lord, we don't want to toil after things that won't count at the end. I don't want to work so hard that I lose my husband, my child, my relationship with you. God, what's most important, God, I want to work for what matters at the end. So I pray for every member, every son and daughters of yours that are here, will you give us a moment today to look back? Am I wasting my time and my effort? Holy Spirit, Help us to remain in your love, in your words. God, sometimes it feels like it won't matter if I open the Bible or not. It won't matter if I go to church or not. It won't matter. Will it really matter? Does it really matter? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Whatever you are connected, whatever you do, if it's connected, If it's led by the words of God, it will count at the end. Even your mistakes will count at the end. Even your shortcomings, if you remain in Him, it will count at the end. But all the riches in the world and success in the world won't count. Will be worthless if you're not connected. And if you don't, continue to go back to the Word of God, don't kid yourself. You're not going to be so tight with Jesus without His words. You need His words. So Holy Spirit, I beg you, I cry out to you that in this season that our people will pursue after your Word more than anything else, that we will be a community that loves the words of our Lord, our King, that we will center our lives in the Word of God, no matter what the world says, that we would prioritize your Word over anything, everything, Lord, that your son, your daughter in this room, Lord, will be awakened to the preciousness of your Word, that we will fall in love with your words again, that we would cry out for your words again, that your words won't be like garbage to us anymore, but God, but God, but God, that we would, cry, we would pursue, that we would be desperate for your word, and that we would guard our lives with your voice, with your words. This week, do something different. God, wake us up. Lead each individual to the anchor. Not only to the Bible, but the living word that's inside of the Bible. Direct them in their situations through your word today, this week, this season, we ask. We want to be your bride that loves your presence, your words, more than anything else in this world. We love you, Father. We love you. 
We love your word. So speak. Daddy God, speak to your sons and daughters this week. And may we be strengthened. May we be nourished by your words this week, we ask. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 A few things. Remember I gave you on Mother's Day the journal? If any of you filled it up and finished it, you bring it to me, you show it to me, I'll give you another journal. Okay? And all the fathers, happy Father's Day. We have a special gift for you. We have boba for free for fathers. Mothers, singles, children, you have to buy $5 for boba and a Korean cake. But fathers is free for you. And then when I release, I want the fathers to go out first because our children have a special gift for our fathers outside. Yeah? So God bless you. See you next week. Pursue the voice of God this week. Yeah? Pursue the word of God this week. Amen? Amen. God bless you.